Hello and welcome to a very special episode of World Traveler Cooking. We've just surpassed 350 subscribers, so I've decided to tackle Espanol sauce, or sauce espanol in French. This means Spanish sauce, but it's one of the foundations of French cooking, and so um, I think it's really important to cover in depth. Now, sauce espanol, or espanol sauce, is basically a... Think of it as being um, a beef gravy with a bit of tomato. Um, and that's basically what we're going to make here today. If you can understand this sauce and the Valuit sauce, which we'll cover at 400 subscribers, then there's a lot of stuff you can do with French cooking that uh, would otherwise be um, close to you. So, the ingredients here are relatively simple. I have four, or I have four cups, or well, I, no, I guess it's um, eight cups, about in that vicinity, about two liters of dark um, beef broth. Now, I've used a very high-grade instant beef broth. Um, they call it here in Indonesia extract sapi, which basically means beef extract. Um, so there are instant ones that you can use. Um, but if you don't have them or you don't feel like, then the next thing is to either get um, canned or prepared beef broth or make your own. Um, I already have a video on making your own Italian beef broth. At some point I'll cover um, a recipe for doing a French beef broth. So that's the first thing. I have 65 grams of butter, probably 100 grams of flour. Um, I want to shoot for around 60 grams of flour that will be added to make the roux. Um, I have around 50 grams of onions and um, carrots. Now these have been cut into what's called a brunoise. A brunoise in American English we would just call finely diced. Uh, basically you cut them into small cubes. Um, this is done by first slicing horizontally, except in the case of onions don't necessarily have to do that part, um, though many people do. Um, and then slicing vertically to get the uh, what's called the julienne and then you rotate it 90 degrees and you cut them into small cubes. And then I have 30 or so grams of um, bacon. Now this is this is a belly bacon from Bali. You're supposed to use like belly bacon or something similar. The difficulty here of course is that in the tropics animals don't put on the same fat reserves as they do in temperate areas because, hey, you don't have to get through the winter. So, this bacon is probably going to be a little bit lean. I might, I might add a little butter. Um, so we have these, we have this, we have 200 gram, no, 200 milliliters of tomato paste. And now we are going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start by sauteing these together, then we'll make our roux and we will add the um, we will make the roux, and then we will add the um, sauce to that. So, we'll start with frying these. So, now I've decided to start off with a little butter because this bacon is so um, lean. But otherwise, you could just put the bacon in the um, pan while it's cold and gently warm it up to render the fat. But this bacon's really lean, so that's not going to work. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fry this for a bit. Um, and then I will go ahead and get, um, get the roux started. We really want a brown roux also, so this will take a while to, to brown. So I'll probably start that on another burner. Now, in preparing the roux, it's really important here that we use a pan that's big enough um, to hold maybe two, two and a half liters worth of stuff. Um, so I'm starting off with this larger pan here, um, and this will be the main pan that we'll make the sauce in. So adding the butter, now I'm going to add the flour. And now we're just going to stir and uh, brown the flour and the butter together. Uh, so this will be a slow process. And once, it's once, once we have a nice, uh, lightly browned, uh, browned roux, then we will add the, um, we will add the uh, broth in. 
and then the basically the fried mixture, which is the onions and um, and it's fine. You know, some of it's going to stick to the bottom, but it's all going to come out once we have once we start adding the uh, the broth. So. This is our very basic point where we could start, but if we let this, um, but if we let this brown a bit more, we'll get a fuller flavor. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, this is just starting to brown now, uh, but you'll notice that even before it starts to brown, the texture starts changing. So I think we're we're right at the point where pretty soon we will start adding the broth. But you can let this get a little darker if you like. Uh, that much at this point is kind of a personal preference thing. So I'm going to start adding broth. So adding broth, you can see the broth is already kind of dark. Um, and most of it's going to get absorbed by the roux. Um, I add usually uh, like a couple um, ladlefuls at a time. And just basically stir to incorporate and then go back and do more. Some people try to add it all at once, but I think that's a little harder to work with. But I'm going to start, uh, yeah, just basically add as much as you feel comfortable working with at a time and stir it to incorporate. Once it's nicely incorporated, go back and add more. Um, adding it little bit by little bit helps prevent you from getting lumps in your bra. It doesn't really matter about that because we will strain it later. But, waste not once more. You can see this is becoming a beautiful brown gravy. So now we're near to the top, so I've gone ahead and added the onions, bacon, etc. And we'll let these simmer here. Um, we're getting near the top of the bowl, so I'm just being a little more careful about it. So this. But uh, from here on out, um, the next thing we will do is we will uh, add our um, herbs. In this case, as I say, I'm probably going to substitute um, down solemn for the bay leaf and, of course, some thyme. And we'll make a barquette garni out of that and just add it to the broth. You can also put it, like, you can wrap it in cloth, if you prefer. So here we've added our tomato. Um, just going to stir this in, and then we will let this simmer for like half an hour. And in this time, it should reduce a bit and thicken. And if it doesn't, then we will just make some more roux and we'll whisk it in. And I'll show you how to do that. But hopefully, we won't need to. Um, and if I don't need to, I'll provide instructions in the description. Yeah, this is looking really nice. So now, uh, I'm just going to be back in like half an hour, 45 minutes. So now this has been uh, boiling, or simmering, well that's been kind of more boiling than simmering, for about 45 minutes to an hour. And you can see where we've lost um, probably almost half of the volume, which is about right. So next we're going to go ahead and strain this, and then we'll do a taste test. So I'm just going to run this through a strainer into a bowl, 
and then um, we'll be ready to try it. So before I want to uh, set up my taste test, I just want to kind of show you we have a really nice thick sauce here. Part of the thickness is from the roux and part of the thickness is from the tomatoes. So I have just a piece of, um, I basically braised uh, some cubes of beef in a pan just for the taste test and I'm going to just drizzle some on top. You don't necessarily need any finesse, um, but this also goes really good with bread and some other things. So I guess I'm ready for the taste test. And now for the taste test. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Rich. Um, you get the tomatoes. You get the beef gravy taste. This is wonderful. I can't say enough good things about it. Now, if you find this content interesting, I hope I've earned a like and a subscription from you. And feel free to check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support my work. There uh, you can get access to um, many of my videos sometimes months before they um, become available. Some of these special videos are not there because I release them on YouTube, but I'll probably put them there at the same time. Um, uh, basically, yeah. At any rate, uh, also, if you like to make a sauce like this, I would love to hear how you do it differently from me. Um, I think... Uh, it's always great for cooks to trade techniques. Anyway, recipes in the description. Bon appetit, and see you next week.